Hi guys, it's Alyssa from Alyssa's Bake Shop and today I'm going to be sharing with you my American buttercream recipe. This is a recipe that I have altered to make it my own. It is the sweetest frosting out of all the frostings, but my cakes are not sweet. So the combination between sweet frosting and not overly sweet cake just works really well in my opinion. This is also the frosting that I use when I would bake and sell to customers. The first step is to make sure that your unsalted butter is at room temperature. You know that it'll be ready to use because you can push down into it and leave an indent and it's nice and soft to the touch. When you use butter that's too cold, it's really hard to incorporate and it can also lead to graininess. I'm going to add two sticks of butter into a stand mixer and I'm going to use a paddle attachment. I know that a lot of recipes call for a whisk attachment and then you switch to a paddle attachment later, but I found that this actually just creates more air bubbles, so I start off with the paddle attachment and I just continue to use it throughout the whole recipe. After I've been mixing it for one minute on high speed, I like to scrape down the bowl and then we're going to add in the powdered sugar. I'm going to start by adding one cup at a time and I'm going to do this just to avoid that sugar cloud that can happen, which has definitely happened to me. Sometimes I am a messy baker, I'll admit it, but I'm in the zone. But we're going to just add the powdered sugar, we're going to mix, and then we're going to stop, add more, and so forth. This recipe calls for three and three quarters cups of powdered sugar. This is also called icing sugar or confectioner sugar. Powdered sugar is what I grew up saying, so that is the term that I'm gonna be using throughout all of my videos. Once you have all of the powdered sugar added, I'm gonna just mix it for about 30 seconds. I don't really wanna overdo it, we just want to incorporate it. I don't really like to sift my powdered sugar because I feel the brand that I buy is already fine enough already. If you are having problems with clumping, then I would go ahead and sift it next time. And you're going to see a mess in 3, 2, 1, mess. So it's okay. It happens to the best of us and that's why I recommend to just use one cup at a time. After it's mixed, you really want to make sure that you scrape down the bowl, especially the bottom of the bowl. I feel in these stand mixers, a lot of times things just kind of get stuck in that bottom part. Next, I'm going to add in a quarter teaspoon of salt, and I'm just kind of shaking it so that it incorporates evenly. The next step is to add our vanilla, and this is a Costco purchase. I feel that this is the best deal out there right now. So I'm going to add two teaspoons of vanilla because we really want this vanilla buttercream flavor to come through. Our final ingredient is the heavy whipping cream. You might just see this as whipped cream or heavy cream, but typically I just call it whipping cream. So I'm adding two tablespoons here and I'm just going to let the buttercream really come together now and I'm not going to make any adjustments until it's been mixed for about three to four solid minutes. Because what happens is the more you mix the buttercream, the more it develops. You don't want to overmix it, but you do want to make sure that you're mixing it enough so that it just really comes together. This is a stage where you can kind of play around and you can add more salt and vanilla based on your personal taste. This is a perfect taste for me, so I'm not going to alter it, but it is looking a little bit yellow because of the hue from the butter. So I'm gonna show you how we can correct this. Whipping it longer is one way, but I'm gonna show you how to use food gel. The first way is to use a purple food gel. I'm using the Americolor food gel, and this is in violet. You wanna make sure that you're using gel and not liquid. I'm also using the tiniest amount here because we don't want to actually turn it purple. Just think about the color wheel, and opposite of yellow is purple, so the two kind of cancel each other out. You can look for butter that is less yellow in color, but I find that that gets more expensive and butter starts to add up really fast, so I prefer to do it this way. And I actually added another small drop of that violet color because we just really needed to counteract that yellow in the buttercream. So I'm going to stop here, but I could probably add even a little more violet, but because of the lighting in the kitchen, I also think that it's coming off a bit yellow as well. I'm not in a fancy studio with lights, but maybe one day. That's the dream, right? So I'm going to show you another color that we can add. I'm going to be adding some white food gel, and this is pretty self-explanatory, 
but white definitely takes more than the violet color. So I feel, you know, the more you add, of course, the whiter it's going to be. And this is really the fastest way to get that shade that you're desiring. If it's for a wedding cake or just something that has to be a super, super nice, bright white color, this is probably what I would recommend. So here I have all three side by side. The one on the left has no gel added to it. The middle one has the violet and the one on the right has the white gel added to it. They are subtle in color, but when you see the buttercream in person, you can definitely tell which one is whiter with the food gel and which one is not. Now I'm going to talk about those dreaded air bubbles. So remember how I said that I'm going to be using a paddle attachment and not a whisk attachment? That's because a whisk attachment is used to incorporate air. So think about when you make something like meringues or macaroons. You're incorporating air because you need it to rise. So that's why I have decided to only use a paddle attachment when I'm making my buttercreams. Another method that you can see I'm doing is to get those air bubbles out, you physically push the frosting around the sides of the bowl. This is definitely an arm workout and this does take a lot of time, but it really does pay off, especially if you need it to be perfect for the cake that you're making. If I'm just going to be using the buttercream to fill the cake, then I don't do this step, but for the outside of my cake, I definitely do this step. You can store buttercream at room temperature for about two days, just right on your counter, and it's not gonna go bad because of the very high fat and sugar content. It kind of almost insulates the whole thing. You can also keep it in the fridge for a month or in the freezer for three months. Now, what I like to do is whenever I know that I'm gonna need it, I take it out of the fridge or the freezer the night before and I just let it thaw on my counter and it's gonna be perfectly fine. If you try to go and mix frozen icing, you're gonna have a hell of a time. So my recommendation is to just really be patient and take it out the night before. After it's come to room temperature, you're gonna have to put it back in the mixer just to bring it back to life to that perfect, beautiful, silky smoothness because temperature does cause air bubbles, so there's really no way getting around that. You can use American buttercream just like how you would Italian and Swiss meringue. You can dye it, you can make flowers, you can use it and then cover it with fondant. You can do all the same things. The thing with American buttercream is that it does crust, so a lot of people recommend to use it if you want to have a cake outdoors. No matter what, a cake is going to melt in the heat. So even if you might get a few more minutes with the American buttercream, I just want to caution you, it will melt. So you can see here that I had iced up some sugar cookies and they had been exposed to the air long enough for the buttercream to crust. Now, the thing is, you can stack them, but I wouldn't recommend doing it like this, and I would put wax paper in between. They are still very delicate, even though they are more stable than an Italian meringue or Swiss meringue, because you can see here, I'm pushing my finger into it, and it's going to leave an indent, or it's going to crumble. But just because it is more sturdy on the outside, it is still nice and soft in the inside. So I just went ahead and I broke off a little piece <laughs> that I ate and I am just going to show you that the inside is still really nice and soft. I have a really strong love of frosting because I don't use fondant in my work. Um, very rarely do I use it. I prefer to make things out of buttercream and I just really love to share all about it. So I did write a blog post with even more questions to American buttercream. And thanks guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.